It seems like the tube is really busy, so I opted to take the bus instead. This is the Roman Wall. The Roman Wall in Tower Hill, London stands as a remarkable testament to the city's rich history and enduring legacy. Constructed nearly two millennia ago during the Roman occupation of Britain, the wall served as a defence fortification encircling the ancient settlement of Londinium. The sundial in Tower Hill stands as a captivating testament to the passage of time and the historical significance of this iconic location. Perched gracefully amidst the bustling cityscape, this magnificent sundial serves as a tangible link to the past, reminding visitors of the rich heritage that surrounds them. Its meticulously crafted design intricately captures the interplay between light and shadow, allowing the sundial to accurately mark the hours with remarkable precision. Here we are in Trinity Square Garden. This garden is a captivating urban oasis nestled within the heart of a bustling city. This enchanting green space beckons visitors with its serene atmosphere and lush surroundings. The garden boasts a vibrant assortment of flowers, shrubs and towering trees, providing a delightful feast for the senses. It also stands as a solemn tribute and a place of remembrance, honouring the lives lost and the enduring legacy of those affected by tragic events. The Tower Hill Memorial is a prominent memorial located on the south side of the Tower of London. It stands as a tribute to the men and women of the Merchant Navy and fishing fleets who lost their lives during both world wars and have no known graves. The memorial was unveiled in 1928 by Queen Mary and it was designed by Sir Edwin Lutyens, a renowned architect. The structure consists of a tall granite obelisk rising from a square base adorned with various naval and maritime motifs. The names of over 36,000 individuals are engraved on bronze panels organised by the year of their death and the ship on which they served. The Tower Hill Memorial serves as a poignant reminder of the sacrifices made by those who served in the Merchant Navy and fishing fleets. It commemorates not only the seafarers who perished at sea, but also those who survived and continued to contribute to the vital maritime industry. The memorial is a symbol of remembrance and gratitude, standing as a testament to the bravery and dedication of those who played a crucial role in the nation's maritime history. We are now heading to the Tower of London. Um, today is the 7th of April and it's um, Easter bank holiday weekend, so we have four days off for Easter. Um, as you can see behind me is Tower of London and um, there's a lot of people here behind me as you can see and it's a nice day we're quite lucky that it's a nice day there's lots of families um, with kids and myself and couples um, and I've um, been to the ticket office and uh, unfortunately uh, admissions um, are fully booked so you can't buy your ticket on the day um, during Easter so um, it's better to get the London pass because that's actually your ticket um, per se so you can just go to the entrance and then just go in there the entrance is not really that long that's the entrance and yeah people just go in there and you're inside yeah, and um, if you want to go to the Tower of London, um, spend at least three to four hours there. That's four hours of your day gone. So yeah, I'm not going to go into the Tower of London. I'm just going to review it um, from this video and then we'll go from there. Okay, I'll see you soon and um, please subscribe, comment and like down below. Okay, bye. Down below. You won't regret it. Back to this video. The Tower of London is a historic landmark situated in the heart of London. With its origins dating back to the 11th century, the tower has played a significant role throughout the country's history. Originally built as a fortress, it later served as a royal palace, a prison and a treasury. 
The tower is famous for its iconic white tower, a central keep that stands tall and imposing. Today, it serves as a museum and is home to the dazzling crown jewels, an exquisite collection of royal regalia. So this is the 1.30pm time slot. You'll be taken into groups and then you'll be going in together. That's when you know that the Tower of London is very popular, that it has to have a time slot for you to come in. So this is the queue for the Tower of Millennium Pier where you can see London from River Thames and you can see all the iconic attractions going all the way to Greenwich. You can skip the queue using the London Pass for this one. Next to the pier you will see the Copper Club Tower Bridge restaurant. The restaurant has gained considerable attention and popularity for its unique dining experience inside igloo-like structures that offer breathtaking views of the iconic Tower Bridge. These transparent domes, affectionately known as igloos, provide an enchanting setting where guests can enjoy their meals while being surrounded by the stunning cityscape. The restaurant's ingenious concept has become an Instagram sensation, drawing visitors from all over the world who are eager to capture the perfect shot of their dining experience. Igloos offer a cosy and intimate atmosphere, complete with comfortable seating, stylish decor and heaters to keep guests warm during colder months. But you have to book at least three months in advance. Opposite the Copper Club Tower Bridge restaurant, enjoy the view of the Shard, and the River Thames. This is the famous London Bridge. People mistakenly confuse this with Tower Bridge up ahead. What I love about the South Bank is the name plaques. Like for example, this Fishmongers Hall Wharf was named after Fishmongers Hall. Oyster Gate Walk pays homage to the area's rich maritime history and its connection to the oyster trade that thrived in the past. While Fruiterer's Passage derives its name from the historical connection to the Fruiterer trade that once thrived in this area. Fruiterer refers to a person who sold fruits and vegetables often in a specialised shop or market store. Fruiterers Passage was likely a bustling thoroughfare where fruiterers operated their businesses, supplying fresh produce to the local community. We are now in Borough Market. Borough Market is a vibrant and bustling food market that has been serving the local community since the 13th century. Steeped in history and tradition, the market is a culinary haven where visitors can explore an array of fresh produce, artisanal products and tantalising food stalls. From colourful fruits and vegetables to the delectable cheeses, aromatic spices, freshly baked bread and succulent meats, Barra Market offers a feast for the senses. The market not only caters to food enthusiasts, but also serves as a meeting point for farmers, producers and passionate artisans who take great pride in their craft. It has become a hub for the city's thriving food scene, showcasing both traditional British fare and international flavours. Beyond the gastronomic delights, Barra Market's lively atmosphere, with its Bustling crowds and charming architecture creates an unforgettable experience for locals and tourists alike. Whether you're seeking a quick bite, ingredients for a home-cooked meal, or simply want to immerse yourself in the rich culinary heritage of London, Borough Market is a must-visit area. Unfortunately, the Golden Hind didn't survive the voyage, but we do have a replica of the ship. It was sailed under the command of Sir Francis Drake during his circumnavigation voyage in the late 16th century. This remarkable vessel serves as a living museum, allowing visitors to step back in time and experience the life of a Tudor sailor. Next, we are going to Winchester Palace. It stands as a captivating ruin, reminiscent of its grandeur from centuries past. 
originally constructed in the 12th century as the London residence of the power bishops of Winchester, the palace was an imposing structure that showcased the wealth and influence of its occupants. Unfortunately, much of the palace was destroyed by a fire in the 17th century. Check out this Clink Prison Museum that dates back between the 12th century to the 18th century. You are now approaching the River Thames and you will see a row of restaurants, cafes and bars. The distinctive Red Anchor pub is an integral part of South Bank and the area simply wouldn't be complete without it. <laughs> As you come out of the tunnel, the first thing you see is a glimpse of St. Paul's Cathedral on the other side of the River Thames and so many cafes, restaurants and pubs. We are now heading to the Globe Theatre and Shakespeare Museum where you see the history of the theatre itself and Shakespeare's work. You can also go on tour. Next you will see the Tate Gallery. This is a world-renowned art institution that offers a free access to its permanent collection. It also connects the Millennium Bridge to St Paul's Cathedral on the other side of the Thames. We are now walking through the Queen's Walk. This is a picturesque promenade that offers a delightful blend of history, culture and scenic beauty. Named in honour of Queen Elizabeth II, this iconic walkway stretches from Westminster Bridge to Tower Bridge, encompassing some of the city's most beloved landmarks. As you stroll along the Queen's Walk, you'll be treated to breathtaking views of the river with notable landmarks such as the London Nine later, Shakespeare's Globe Theatre, the Tate Modern and the iconic Tower Bridge grazing the horizon. Check out the Founders Arm situated by the River Thames. This pub is always busy with people during the weekends. People would often watch boats and sea containers driving through the River Thames and enjoying the view. We are now at the Oxford Tower shopping complex. This is a unique and stylish area for shoppers and art enthusiasts alike. Housed with the iconic Oxo Tower, originally a power station and now a symbol of urban regeneration, the shopping destination offers a diverse range of boutiques, galleries and design shops. What I love about South Bank is that you often see random entertainers just showcasing their talent. We are now approaching Gabriel's Wharf. This is a hidden gem that offers a delightful blend of art, culture and riverside charm. This vibrant enclave is named after Gabriel Christian, a local resident and artist who played a key role in its development. With its colourful assortment of shops, boutiques, cafes and art galleries, Ga Gabriel's Wharf is a haven for locals and tourists. The cobblestones walkways and picturesque riverside views provide a tranquil escape from the hustle and bustle of the city. Visitors can explore a diverse range of independent boutiques showcasing unique fashion, accessories and homeware. Art enthusiasts can browse through galleries that exhibit an eclectic mix of contemporary and traditional artwork. The wharf is also home to cosy cafes and eateries where visitors can save their delicious foods while enjoying the scenic backdrop of the river. It exudes a bohemian atmosphere that fosters creativity and community, making it a cherished area for locals and tourists, seeking a charming and artistic experience in the heart of London. In this area, you'll see many street food stores from churros, beef burgers, chips and many more. We'll also see more bars, pubs and cafes and often in spring and summer people will come out and drink outside by the River Thames. 
We are now approaching the National Theatre. This theatre stands as a beacon of artistic excellence and creativity. Located in the south bank of the River Thames, it is one of the most prestigious and influential performing arts institutions in the world. Since its opening in 1963, the National Theatre has showcased a diverse range of theatrical productions ranging from classic plays to groundbreaking contemporary works. You will see the South Bank Book Market. This charming open-air market boasts rows of quaint stores adorned with stacks of books ranging from vintage classics to contemporary bestsellers. The market creates a delightful browsing experience, inviting visitors to peruse the vast collection of titles, discover hidden gems and engage in conversations with knowledgeable and passionate booksellers. Check out BFI South Bank, which is a renowned cultural hub in London, known for its diverse and curated selection of films and events. Now we are at the South Bank Skate Park. Nestled on the banks of the River Thames, this iconic skate park has become a cultural landmark and a hub for the skateboarding community. With its unique urban backdrop, including the famous graffiti-covered undercroft, the skate park offers a diverse range of ramps, rails and obstacles that cater to skaters of all skill levels. Now you are in South Bank Centre. This is a vibrant and iconic cultural complex. It encompasses a variety of world-class venues, including the Royal Festival Hall, the Queen Elizabeth Hall, the Purcell Room and the Hayward Gallery. The South Bank Centre is a cultural hub that hosts a diverse range of artistic performances, exhibitions, festivals and events throughout the year. From classical music concerts and contemporary dance performances to theatre productions and literary events. The centre caters to all artistic tastes and interests. Prime location offers stunning views of the city's skyline and landmarks such as the London Eye and the Houses of Parliament. In addition to its artistic offerings, the South Bank Centre also boasts numerous restaurants, cafes and shops, making it a lively and dynamic area for both Londoners and visitors from around the world. Check out this fairground ride for your kids to enjoy. After all that walking, why not rest at the Jubilee Gardens? This garden commemorates Queen Elizabeth II's Diamond Jubilee in 2012 and has since become a popular area for both locals and tourists. The garden offers a tranquil escape from the bustling city, with beautifully landscaped lawns, vibrant flower beds and a variety of trees providing shade and serenity. In this area you will also see cheesy performers. Obviously everyone loves it. We are now approaching the London Eye. Although it is not included in the London Pass, it stands tall as an iconic landmark on the South Bank. This giant ferris wheel offers visitors breathtaking panoramic views of the River Thames, Big Ben and Westminster Abbey. While the regular queue for the London Eye can often be long, those seeking a quicker experience can opt for a fast track ticket, albeit at a higher price. This allows guests to bypass the regular queue and enjoy a shorter wait time of around 15 minutes. Along this area, you'll be able to see the London Dungeons where you'll step back in time, back to the 16th century, up to the 18th century. Next to the London Dungeons, you can visit Shrek's Adventure where kids will love going on an adventure with Shrek and his friends. Next to Shrek's Adventure, you can visit Sea Life. This is a captivating and immersive underwater experience, home to a wide array of fascinating marine species from around the world. Following that, venture through a tunnel that grants you a remarkable vantage point of the renowned Big Ben, 
a testament to London's endless ability to astonish. However, do anticipate a lengthy line as this location is highly sought after for capturing stock photos. COVID-19 Memorial on the South Bank adorned with red hearts stands as a poignant tribute to those who have lost their lives during the pandemic. This touching memorial provides a space for individuals to remember and honour their loved ones by inscribing their names. This is St Thomas's Hospital. Feel free to have a rest at their park. As you stroll along Westminster Bridge towards Big Ben, it is essential to remain vigilant and cautious of a prevalent scam targeting unsuspected passers-by. This particular scam involves street performers enticing individuals to participate in a seemingly straightforward game where the objective is to locate a hidden ball under one of several cups. Don't forget to turn around and see the view of the River Thames and London Eye. Take a photo of Big Ben while you're here. If you have time, take a tour of Westminster Abbey where you'll see 1,000 years worth of history on famous people and royalty. Okay, that's it guys. Um, this is the end of my video. I hope you like it and I've given you so many ideas on what to do. Um, things to do in the South Bank and I guarantee you that you won't have time to do everything in one day and um, it's a nice day thankfully for Easter and uh, yeah behind me is Big Ben and yeah um, I'll see you in the next video then please subscribe comment and like down below I'll see you in the next video then bye, bye. Oh, what, and one other thing, if you're not too tired, um, probably about 10 minutes away, um, it's, you can go to the West End where you can see Trafalgar Square, Leicester Square, Chinatown, Shaftesbury Avenue, and it's also close to Churchill War Museums, Buckingham Palace, Westminster Abbey, and St. James's Park. So if you're not too tired in the evening, you can visit the West End in 10 minutes from here. Head home and take a photo of the iconic post box and the London Eye. We are now in Whitehall. This is a historic road in the heart of London. It holds great significance as a symbol of power and governance. It is renowned for its grandeur and majestic architecture with iconic landmarks lining its path. On Remembrance Day, Whitehall becomes the focal point of a deeply significant ceremony. The King, along with other politicians, gather on this road to pay tribute to the fallen soldiers who sacrificed their lives in wars and conflicts. This street stretches from Trafalgar Square to the Palace of Westminster, passing through the heart of the city's political district. In front of you is Downing Street. Unfortunately, you can't see the number 10 door, but you will often see people crowding around the gate. You will usually see demonstrators outside the gate or opposite the street. If you come here earlier enough, at the gate you will see the king's horses and the guards. You will be able to take photos with them. Inside, the horse guard parade will connect you to Buckingham Palace.